Hello. I hope I'm audible. Hope the audio video everything is fine. Okay, so I'll wait for a few more joinees. Yes, uh, I hope we can start. Yes. Okay, so hello everyone. Good evening. I'm Lakshmi Janardhanan. I'm working as a speech language pathologist and audiologist at one special place. And I welcome you all to the live session on stuttering. Uh, I hope I'm audible to you everyone. Uh, so today uh, in this live session, I would like to share some information about uh, stuttering, some facts and some general information. And uh, yeah, so when we start uh, with stuttering, as you all know, stuttering has to do a lot with uh, the regular fluency of speech. And uh, so when we mention about stuttering, the first thing that comes to our mind is fluent speech. Okay, so we all have certain moments of disfluencies, uh, like, you know, at times we add certain filler words, as I told right now, it can be, you know, uh, you have seen people adding frequently the phrase, you know, or at times they add, what say, at times some people add like, it is like, it is like this, like that. So, and if not, there are some moments we just keep on thinking and that has been filled with sounds like mm, mm, like that. So all these are considered as disfluencies. But uh, in people with stuttering, what happens? The disfluencies are more or we can say that uh, the disfluencies vary. Uh, or there are different types of disfluencies uh, in a person with stuttering. So how uh, can these be categorized? So there are different types of disfluencies. Number one is repetition of certain sounds, l, l, like this, or repetition of certain words, like, like, uh, like this, or it can be prolongation, prolongation which is manifested as like this, or it can be some abnormal block wherein the person just get stuck, or the person uh, doesn't know how to come out with words. So there are different types of disfluencies which vary in different degrees in people with stuttering. And uh, what happens? They make efforts, they take effort to speak. And finally, if the disfluencies are more or the severity of stuttering is more, what happens? Uh, it will end up in having some facial grimaces or some physical movements of the extremities. Okay, so abnormal movements of your body parts, uh, which has been uh, manifested at, uh, which is called as uh, physical, uh, you know, physical concomitants, etc. Those are technical terms. And then what happens? Uh, finally, the person uh, will have discomfort. Uh, they are not comfortable in communicating with people. And hence, for this reason, we can call stuttering as a communication disorder. So it is categorized under communication disorder and uh, it is a speech disorder, it's a fluency disorder we can call. And then what happens? Uh, these disfluencies, uh, the major problem is the disfluencies vary across situations or vary across different people. So uh, that means every day or every moment might not be the same. Disfluencies might be more if that person is under frustration or if the person is stressed out or even uh, the person is more anxious, the disfluencies will be more. In case you are hurry, you are in a hurry and you have to convey something very quickly. In such cases also, the disfluencies might be more. And uh, there is a tendency for people with stuttering to stutter more if he is uh, very much, you know, excited about something, he is... Uh, extremely happy. So overall, we can say that the disfluencies might be more uh, when the emotional uh, state of mind, it depends upon the emotional state of mind. So that is a fact about stuttering. And then the major issue with these type of disfluencies is that uh, people develop a negative reaction or negative feeling about their own speech. 
so what happens uh, if you have stuttering yeah you tend to stutter more depending upon the situations as i told or depending upon the state of mind so overall what will happen it will develop a negative feeling within that person and he will have reluctance or he will keep himself away from uh, speech situations or situations wherein he has to communicate with more people and that is why stuttering is always associated with some psychological factors too all right uh, so the major issue is that the disfluencies uh, can uh, lead to some negative feelings especially when they speak with higher authorities or an interview board or uh, situations wherein these people are in a group especially with strangers a group of strangers or a group of people who are not that familiar with and um, so in this context it is very much important to mention uh, about the help that are available for people who stutter how can we help them how who are involved in management of stuttering who are involved in treating people with stuttering or helping them with stuttering so uh, helping people with stuttering so when uh, you mention about the intervention strategies definitely stuttering needs holistic management with the professional support of speech language pathologist as well as psychologist and uh, family definitely plays an important role in the management no doubt and yes uh, i would like to tell you that speech language pathologist uh, have role in the management of adults as well as ch children with stuttering okay we can intervene at any period of time Uh, and the therapies aim at uh, helping individuals to speak more easily uh, to speak more fluently i can tell you and feel better about themselves and their speaking ability as well as communicate more effectively across different situations that means uh, it is not like you know i cannot say you that okay i'm going to cure your stuttering no that is not the right word it is uh, all about accepting uh, the condition of speech and then helping him uh, to improve that situation and then dealing with different situations and have a positive feel or confidence about own speech and have confidence on handling different situations or different people uh, across languages too so it is more like a holistic management wherein you are having a team uh, for intervention it is not that i cannot tell you that okay uh the person approaches uh, one single professional and then okay everything is done no uh, it is a team a team of uh, speech language pathologist a team involving the psychologist as well as uh, the uh, as well as the speech therapist who are... yes sorry there was an interruption i hope uh, the audio is clear again and then what happens after that uh, see when uh, therapist i have discussed about the therapist now let me tell you something about early intervention so we have heard this term the term early intervention is very much popular or the term early intervention early management uh, is more highlighted in the scenario it has been used in different contexts i am very sure so what happens when to treat stuttering or uh, is it like children are too young or am i too old uh, so such queries are uh, out of the situation out of the scenario why because see whenever you notice let me talk about children whenever the parents notice that okay my child speech is uh, the fluency of my spe child speech is something different uh, from uh, the typically developing children or my child is repeating certain words abnormally and you need not wait uh, for the child to uh, grow up or the, uh, for the child to reach the school age usually what happens between the age of 3 3 and 1/2 and 5 between the age of 3 and 1/2 to 5 let me tell you uh, if the child develops uh, disfluencies or the child uh, you, you feel that the uh, rate of speech is uh, not really uh, in the normal pace it is at times very fast and the child does not uh, uh, clearly uttering all the words properly or there are many repetitions happening the child is getting stuck you need not wait uh, these can be considered as red flags and definitely you have to seek the help of an slp of a slp uh, why because see that is as you know it is a critical period 3 and 1/2 to 5 years is the best time uh, the brain develops 
and that is the right time to meet uh, the SLP and uh, you have to definitely seek the help and if you don't know definitely you can browse and uh, there will be your pediatrician who are uh, directing you to the right professional. So the earlier the better if you ask me and you need not wait for the child to uh, reach the school age and expose to more language naturally to uh, so that it will naturally subside that thought uh, is not um, that much appreciated. So as soon as the parents feel that the disfluencies are more or the child's speech is going to be in a higher pace with more repetitions definitely it is ideal to meet the uh, professional. And then comes, okay, let me uh, talk about children of school age or teenagers and adults. There will be, uh, they might not have, they might not have got the right chance uh, to meet uh, their professionals when they were too young or uh, during their period. The therapies might not have been very uh, popular or they might not have got a chance to, um, no, no, uh, are you catering? Uh, to children is a question no we are uh, not catering only uh, children we cater children we cater adults too so right now I'm going to speak about uh, adults uh, the next sentence was about adults uh, so let me talk about uh, uh, the age group like teenagers and uh, adults so definitely they might not have got a chance to deal with uh, it professionally so what happens that time we always have an option to meet uh, your team of professionals that is SLP and psychologists let me say that again uh, so they will evaluate you they will give you the best uh, assessment uh, plan we have got a lot of standardized assessment test uh, to understand the severity of stuttering to understand the severity of uh, you know uh, to understand how natural your speech is how how severe the stuttering is so we have got standardized uh, assessment tools for that and we what your SLP will do you they will evaluate your uh, level of stuttering the degree of stuttering and there will be tailor-made plans tailor-made plans for uh, uh, dealing with it uh, so usually what happens as I told you uh, your therapy sessions will aim at a lot of parameters number one is going to be uh, your effortless speech fluent speech uh, and making you more comfortable and accepting and making you more confident uh, to speak in different situations and across different people. So that is how we deal with adults and definitely the adult sessions as well as um, child, child um, pediatric sessions will have this 360 degree multidisciplinary team to help you out with. So um, now coming to uh, the plans for stretching, coming to uh, what is happening at one special place. Uh, being a teletherapist, uh, I would like to tell you proudly that we have dealt with uh, both uh, I mean, people with stuttering across different age groups, both uh, children as well as adults. Uh, we have dealt with uh, a lot of people and we have got excellent results out of our therapy sessions. And only thing is that you have to be uh, investing time, you have to be very much regular and you should be determined to go ahead with your therapy sessions because it's not something that has been cured with medicine or it is not something that has been cured with a uh, uh, quick uh, short number of sessions or brief sessions, no. Only thing, be determined uh, and uh, find out your right professional. Uh, as I told you, uh, we have got a lot of, you know, plans. Uh, we have got the right uh, trained and certified professionals in our team. So what we do purposefully, I mean, what we do uh, basically is that we right from assessment uh, throughout the therapy, we provide them excellent support in terms of uh, speech therapy as well as psychological sessions. And uh, I would be glad to tell you that we have got packages exclusively for stuttering uh, for children as well as adults. And this program is known as Speak Easy program that is exclusively been tailor made for individuals with stuttering and we have got speakeasy program for both uh, children as well as adults and it is an excellent plan uh, wherein you will get uh, support from different therapists uh, among our team and uh, that is an excellent uh, tailor made program for stuttering that has been provided exclusively by one special place and uh, you will get a lot of information about stuttering through our blogs uh, in our websites you can definitely go through that and also uh, see you can I would definitely recommend you to follow our Instagram page and follow our website our content 
for more updates and more information about this PKC program. That is a very valuable program, very much, uh, you know, uh, the program with more customer satisfaction too. And yes, so uh, I would like to know if you have any queries, uh, anyone from your end. Yes, uh, so I hope this uh, information was useful and uh, before I log out, I would like to inform you that there is an excellent webinar uh, coming up next month that is exclusively for stuttering. That is going to be a very detailed informative webinar from Team 1SP uh, and uh, we will be floating the information very soon. So you can follow us in our Insta or website. Uh, will be uploading the details soon and the webinar will be having uh, very detailed information regarding stuttering, uh, frequently asked questions and that is going to be an interactive session which explains all the uh, therapy strategies and how to deal with it and uh, uh, you will also have uh, interaction with the professionals from the team. Uh, both uh, SLPs and psychologists so that is going to be an excellent webinar so stay tuned for our updates. And I hope uh, it was uh, a useful session. The information was useful. Right? Okay. Yes. So that's all. Have a nice evening. Uh, stay tuned for more updates. Bye.